recording. So I'm recording it that way everybody can watch that as unable to log in uh, tonight and uh, participate in this. But, uh, but basically, um, what I really want to focus on tonight is just our individual presentations for this class. And I thought, you know, because it's not the normal traditional setting where we're in class and I can have you sign up and then you pick a date and then you give your presentation to the class and all that, uh, it makes it a little more challenging. Uh, and I'm going to give you two different options, as you should know, um, on how you can do that, how you can do your presentation. So, uh, so what I'm going to start with is um, going to our class to share my screen. And I'm going to go to um, our class in Canvas. So sorry, I was looking at my Cerritos classes. So let's see. I think I got it right here. Well, that's the PowerPoint. Yes, I already got out of there. So let me go back in. <clears throat> and by the way, if you guys have any questions as I'm talking, uh, please feel free to just interrupt me. Um, there's also a chat at the bottom, so you're welcome to put any comments or any questions into chat, and it should pop up on my screen and let me know uh, what's going on. So this is our homepage in Canvas. You guys all know that. Hopefully you're getting familiar with it. And uh, I'm going to go to modules. So I'll, I'm going to go to the actual assignment itself. Um, so I kind of kept moving it around, but it's this week. It's at the bottom. Start individual presentation. And kind of the goal of this assignment is isn't really focusing on your content. It really is in your presentation skill and your ability to make um, to really use all the, the elements of presentations with your PowerPoint slides. And so it's kind of the two pieces, how well you present, how you speak, your voice, the words you use, things like that, that it's professional, uh, but then also how you create your slides, how, you know, how well they're designed, how clean they are, how consistent they are, things like that. So um, that's really what I'm gonna grade you on. Your content is secondary. So the, the content that you can choose from is either A, your foremost significant life events, which is what I typically do. So this is, and I'm gonna show you my presentation, by the way, if you've not looked at it already. And then, or you can just do your passion. It can be one topic and you can do, you know, the five minute presentation on your passion. I'm gonna let you choose, um, but the four significant life events kind of makes it a little easier because you pretty much can make a slide for each one of the four events, you know, and have an in uh, title slide at the beginning and maybe a recap slide at the end and you have like five or six or seven slides at the most and you're done, it makes it a little easier. Uh, so some, most students like to do that. Um, the, so that's kind of the, the assignment. Um, I'm gonna go over all this in detail in a minute as far as what I'm looking for in this particular assignment uh, when it comes to the, um, the presentation itself. For instance, it needs to be you know, no more than five minutes long. Um, you can go from 4.30 to five minutes but if you go over five minutes, you lose points. Uh, you lose 10 points for every set, not every second, but if you go over by one second, you automatically lose 10 points and they give you uh, a one minute grace period. So you could go, if you go five or one, you might as well go six, right? Uh, you're gonna lose the same amount of points. If you go short, you're also gonna lose points. So when you do your presentation, um, if you do end up recording it in PowerPoint, you can actually set the length of time and it'll actually shrink it down or stretch it out a little bit to fit your time. Uh, but I'll be looking for that. If for some reason the counter doesn't work or I'm not seeing any time frame, uh, I'll actually uh, time you with a timer when I'm watching your presentation online. But the two options for giving the presentation are gonna be that you can do it in Zoom, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. You guys see my face on the screen, right? And you see my screen. So I could literally give my presentation um, right now. I'm not gonna give it, but I'm gonna show you uh, obviously, this would be the easiest way to do it. So I'll launch my presentation and I'll just show you this. And so if I go here and I launch my show, now I can actually give my presentation right here and I can step through all my slides and you guys can see all my slides as I go, right? So that's, that's somewhat of a benefit to do it here um, in Zoom. It's, it's, you know, you can do it live in front of an audience as far as us all being here, whoever ends up logging in when you sign up and uh, it's all you don't have to worry about recording it you don't have to worry about uploading it i'm going to watch it right there live i'm going to grade it right here live 
and then you're done. And that's kind of easier for me. It's easier for you. So I, if you can, I'd really prefer that you select to do it in Zoom during one of the Zoom sessions that I will be holding over the next couple of months. The other option is you can record it, like I mentioned, and the negative of recording it is it's, it's a little challenging for you to record it where you actually have a video. So like right now, you're looking at my screen and you're looking at me in a, in a video, uh, but if you just record your audio, all I'm, gonna, all I'm gonna see and anyone else is gonna see if we post these uh, in the discussion post is your screens and then hear your voice behind it. And it's just not as compelling. So uh, I'll show you an example of what I would like to do if you're going to do it um, in, in a recorded session of some sort, whether that be, you could do it in, um, you can get a free uh, YouTube account. You can record it in YouTube if you want. Uh, other students find different ways of doing it. Um, so whatever works for you, you can do it however you want. But here's an example of a student that did it last semester. And uh, her name's Hello. Stephanie. My name is Stephanie Crona. So you can see her. I don't know if you guys can see it, but her picture is up on the right. These are my four corner. So you guys see that? Life events. Am I in your so way? So first, I'd like to talk about picture? is Riverside City College. This is. Can you guys see your picture? Kind of. You're you're, you're kind of covering her. Okay, I'm trying to move me out of the way, but uh, let's see if I can move her. So I'll go down here. How's that? Um, can you guys see your face now? Yes. Okay. Yes. I gotta move me out of the way. How about now? Still see her? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So here's her presentation again. I'm gonna start it over. Hello, my name is Stephanie Krona, and I was born 12-26-1990. These are my four significant life events. It's funny because I remember her from, I remember the student from a few classes years ago and I didn't realize that she was just in my class again. Uh, anyway, um, so that's kind of the other option that you can do. Now, I would ideally like you to be able to record your presentation where you have a video of you speaking. And that way I get a chance to kind of see your face and so does all the other students. That's my preference. However, I cannot make that mandatory because we do have, uh, we do have some students that are, unable to afford a camera and I understand that so really what I would say is if you can do a video please do it with a video uh, of yourself in it if there's no way you can do that then you you do get a break and you don't have to uh, I would prefer then that you try and do it in zoom but I'm going to give you the option of either of the, those uh, you can do either way um, like I said if you do it in zoom I'll grade it right there your grade will be uh, posted when we're done with the zoom session you don't have to upload anything. You're not dealing with any of that stuff. Um, but if you prefer to record it, then you have to upload it. Sometimes they get a little bit large. Um, hers was 10 megabyte, which wasn't bad. You can also record it, like I said, in YouTube. And then you just basically it resides in YouTube. And then you just upload the link. And then when I click the link, it takes me to YouTube and I can watch it there. That's another option. Uh, but however you want to do it, I'll let you choose. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to sign up if you want to do it in Zoom. I have a uh, some dates in March, uh, a couple of Wednesdays and a couple of Thursdays, both evening and morning. So I'll let you decide if you wanna do it then. You can pick a date and then log in at that time and you can give your presentation. Even if it's just me, then that's fine. If there's other students, then great. Um, so that's that's pretty much um, the that piece of this. Now I'm gonna go over this assignment a little bit more in detail. Uh, as it says right here, I know that you guys can read this, but I want to just make sure you understand everything that's here. So your presentation should have basically six PowerPoint slides if you do the four most significant life events. Um, just like I showed you on my presentation, I'm going to go back to that. I apologize. I'm moving around here a lot. Hold on. I'm going to move this. There we go. So let me go back to my presentation for a second because I'm going to show you some of these things on my presentation. Uh, sorry, let me come back to it. So you should have a title slide, a navigation slide. Now a navigation slide is where you basically are going to tell us where you're going to go. And uh, so usually if it's four points, even if it's your life passion and you have three points, I want you to tell us where you're going to go. As If you've read the chapter yet, you know, one great uh, rule that you should follow in giving any kind of presentation is, is basically tell us what you're going to tell us, then tell us then tell us what you told us, right? So tell us what you're gonna tell us is the navigation slide. So if I go back to my 
presentation that I didn't give. Um, the second slide is my navigation slide. So here I have my four life significant events. And if I was to actually be doing the presentation, I would, my slide would come up like this and then I would hit my arrow, my, my down arrow, my space bar, and it would talk about my first significant life event. So I, tonight I'm gonna to be talking to you about my four significant life events. My first one is getting hitched. My second one is touring the world. My third one is being on mission for God. And my fourth one is down by the river. So those are my four points, right? Those are the things I'm gonna be talking about. So that's what we call a navigation slide. It's telling us where we're gonna go. And uh, you should have a navigation slide. And what I just did there by having these come up one at a time, that is called a build. So you're building, it's all on the same slide. So if you go back to PowerPoint, notice it's all on the same slide. I built the slide and then I made a build out of it. And I made it so that one thing comes up at a time. Uh, those are two very important things that I look for in your presentation is, are you using a navigation slide in your presentation? Are you using builds in your presentation? And then, um, so those are very important things to, to point out to you. Uh, also back to our um, thing here is you should have a slide for each of your four events and then you should have some kind of a conclusion slide. Sometimes students like to put all four points up again at the end and recap the four points they just talked about. That's actually a very good practice to get into. Again, tell them what you're gonna tell them, then tell them, and then tell them what you told them. So that's your conclusion slide. In this presentation though, because it is so short, um, that extra slide sometimes puts students over. So I say, you can do that if you have enough time. If you don't, then just put a question slide, question mark or a question slide, and that kind of signals that you're done. So any questions, and then that lets me know you're done as well. So those are, um, those are the things that you must have. You should also use, again, a navigation slide, a bullet point builds. So just like I showed you, I brought all four of my points up on the screen uh, one at a time when I was uh, using my navigation slide. I do the same thing on my other slide. So if I go to my show. So now first thing I'm going to talk to you about tonight is getting hitched. So this is my marriage and my family. And then I have builds. Notice I, I'm going to be talking about when I got married. I got married July 1986 after knowing my wife for seven months or my girlfriend at the time. And uh, we got married. Uh, so there's a picture of our wedding. Uh, and then my, there's a, a more modern picture of us a few years ago. And then in 1990, I had my son, Andrew. And in 1995, I had my daughter, Miranda. But see how I'm building my presentation? There's a picture that was probably about 10 years ago now. Uh, then in 2018, we had our first family wedding. My daughter got married, and then my son actually is getting married. Um, he's getting married in May May 1st of this year. So yeah, good. Get rid of him finally. Anyway, uh, yeah, I put their sad and happy faces because he's still at home, which we really like him being here. But at the same time, he's got to go. You know what I mean? So uh, anyway, so that's <laughs> of, that's what I mean by builds. So notice how all those came up one at a time. See how I did that again? That's what I mean by using builds. And if you don't know how to do that, I'll show you how to do that before we're done here uh, tonight. So that's, uh, that's what I said there, use builds. Um, pictures, I kind of use a lot of pictures, but I think you should always use pictures or graphics because boring PowerPoint slides that just have text on them are boring and nobody likes to look at them. So do something visual that we can, you know, relate to. Uh, if you want to use transitions, transitions are Again, what I kind of demonstrated there, but you should really use them. So again, if I launch my slide here, notice how my letters come up. They kind of dissolve in a little bit. See how they dissolve in when I press the button, they dissolve in and then they dissolve in. So you can do, you can do all kinds of different transitions uh, between the slides or between the builds. And so I'll show you how to do that if you don't know how to do that in PowerPoint, but those are, are nice to have. But if you do use those, don't use like, 10 different ones in your presentation. You should only use uh, one or two to keep it consistent. Uh, make sure all your slides are consistent too, that you have you know, the, the same font on every page, the same size font on every page. If you have a title block, use the same title block on all your slides. That makes it look very professional. Um, and then correct size and style of font. Uh, if you haven't read this already, you shouldn't have anything really smaller than a 30. You can get by with the 24, 28, but 30 really should be what you're targeting for on the small end of things. Um, on the large end, you can go as big as you need to, 
And then use the six by six rule. Anybody here know what the six by six rule is by any chance? Any guesses? Yeah, isn't it uh, no more than six bullet points per slide and then no more like than six words per bullet point? Exactly, yep. So basically uh, this, my thing here is a good example of, by the way, I was in a band back in the eighties, but anyway, uh, I, so I have here my bullet points. I, this one, I only have four on there and I, and I have less than six words. So the idea is you don't have paragraphs. You don't have a bullet point and then a paragraph. You don't have a bullet point and then three sentences. You know, you don't have a bullet point and even a sentence. You have a bullet point and a few words to make the point that you need to make. They don't have to be sentences. They can be whatever is gonna help your audience understand as well as help you in your presentation. So six by six rule is very important. Make sure you don't have more than six points on your uh, slide and make sure you don't have any bullet points with um, paragraphs after them. All right, and then I already went over the time that you're gonna need uh, to be within. Uh, so make sure you time yourself. Of course, you're gonna be great on the quality of your slides, so how they look, whether they're readable, whether they're professional, whether you use right contrasting colors, things like that, and then for how well you present. So I wanna talk a little bit about your presentation. Um, first thing is when you speak, speak loud. Um, even though you're speaking to your computer, a lot of my students do this assignment and they talk like this. So hi everybody, my name's Eric and I'm here tonight to give you my four significant life events. You know, they're like whispering in the closet. You know, I want you to speak loud. So present your presentation as if you were giving it uh, especially if you're in Zoom, but even if you're recording it, make sure you do that. Um, don't mumble or whisper. Make sure you speak loud. Try to articulate your words if you can. Avoid the you knows and the likes and the ums and the basicallys and so anyways and all those kinds of things that I even do, which I've been speaking a long time. So, But trying to get rid of those out of your speaking. Uh, so try and be conscious of it. And then show some excitement. You know, don't don't be drab and boring and quiet. Try and be excited about your four significant life events or your passion. That's why I let you choose those topics or do those topics because there's something you should be somewhat excited about. Now that doesn't mean that students don't share some personal sad stories. A lot of people do. They share maybe the death of a loved one or, or things like that. And that's okay. You can share all that and we don't expect you to be excited about that. But my point is, is, is don't, you know, make sure that you are projecting your voice, that you're showing that there's that you have energy, and that's very important in giving a business presentation because the last thing you want to do is bore everybody to death, right? So make sure you do that, and then on your slides again, keep them simple, keep them clean, try and be a little bit creative, and be consistent. Again, keep everything consistent from slide to slide. Don't use eight different fonts over five different slides. You know, keep everything similar. Follow the six by six rule, use pictures, use navigation screens, use builds, and make sure your timing is good. So that's what you'll be graded on. Again, I gave you the two ways to do it in Zoom or you can record, you can record it uh, in whatever software you can do that in. Um, and then I'm gonna grade you. So here's the rubric I use. And basically I just break it into, it's a hundred points for the assignment. I break it into these categories. So. Did you speak clear and loud enough for me to hear and the audience to hear? If you were in the class, I would say the person in the last row needs to be able to hear you. And if they can't, then I would mark you down on that. Um, organization and flow, how well does your thoughts flow from one thing to the next as you're presenting? Uh, what, what is your choice of words? Are you using professional terms? Are you, are you very informal and using a lot of slang or a lot of, a lot of um, language that maybe other audiences wouldn't understand. So keep in mind that your audience may be diverse. Uh, and then any other elements that make you stand out, usually everybody automatically gets 10 on that. But like if you used uh, pictures or you told something interesting that I thought was really interesting, I'll, I'll note that, you know, that was an interesting story or whatever. And then on the PowerPoint slides, I grade you 50 points the same way. So is it organized? Do your slides have organization? This is where I'm looking for things like six by six rule. Did you, uh, did you use builds? Did you use a navigation slide that shows organization? Uh, readability, are the slides clear and easy to read? Did you have, again, six by six rule? Did you have any, um, you know, sm too small of a font or some weird font that nobody could read? Or contrasting colors flow, was it, did it flow from one slide to the next consistently? Was there 
quality, any spelling errors, any grammar issues, and then anything else that stands out is your, um, again, using pictures, things like that, uh, or that your slides are just really well organized or really very professional looking. I know a lot of students just love to grab the template that's in PowerPoint and they use that, and that's fine. You can totally do that. But I get excited when a student finds, you know, a nice template to use that's maybe not the most common or even designs their own and, uh, and creates that. It's not going to change your grade either way, but if you really want to excel and, and really practice this, that's what I would recommend that you do. And then time management. This is where I'm going to mark you down. So you might have got 100 points on all those first 10 things, but if you go over, this is where I start minusing points. So if you go over five minutes, you lose 10 points right off the bat. If you go to six minutes, you lose 15 points. If you go seven minutes, you lose 20 points, et cetera. On the short end, if you go too short, which actually tends to be more of a problem is going short, is I mark five points off for every minute that you're short. So if you came in at four or 335, I'll, I'll actually, I'll, I'll mark for every, sorry, every 30 seconds. So if you are off by, you know, 420, you're gonna lose five points. If you're off, if you're less than four, you're gonna lose 10 points. If you're less than 330, you're gonna lose 15 points, et cetera. So make sure you time it. A lot of students um, you know, think they got it perfectly timed and then either they talk really fast because they're nervous or they add a lot of stuff they weren't intending and they go long. Just make sure you time yourself. Fortunately, if you do record it, that's one of the benefits is if you know how to do it, you can, you can, shrink, you can shrink or stretch your presentation to exactly five minutes. Uh, so that's on you, but make sure you, you're in the five minute range. So, so that's pretty much it for the assignment itself. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? And I'm before we leave today, I am gonna go over two more things. I'm gonna show you the PowerPoint uh, that we're going over this week, chapter 12. And I'm also gonna, gonna give you an opportunity to sign up uh, if you wanna sign up for doing your presentation in Zoom with me present. So any questions before I get into those two things? I was gonna ask, do you know any um, software that people have used in the past where their face shows and they do the presentation? I don't, <laughs> That's the, I'm trying to find that. So I actually use, because uh, our church uses a software called Switcher and it actually cr acts like a little studio on your iPad. So I'm able to like put my computer screen in there, my camera angle, I can do multiple angles and, and then it records it all and it has my little picture and that's what I did the video in, if you guys watched my intro video, that's how I did that one. Uh, but I don't know, I know that there's software out there that does it. Um, you can do it in YouTube, but I don't know how to share your screen in YouTube. Uh, the other option is to do it in Zoom. If you have a Zoom account, like a paid Zoom account, you can actually do it in Zoom and then have it sent back to you. So you'll basically record a Zoom session and then it'll email you a link. So that's another option. That's what I tried last semester and it seemed to me that probably half of my 35 students just recorded it and had no video, which was disappointing, but I mean, it is what it is. So yeah, sorry, Ryan, wish I had a better answer. And I actually did a little research on it and I figured you guys probably know more than I do about what's out there, so. Uh, yeah, I know you can use uh, OBS software, which is free. Really, okay. Yeah, OBS, um, yeah, I, I, uh, a lot, that's what like people use like to stream on like Twitch and like, you know, stuff like that, uh, live streaming. So yeah, you can go on there and mess with OBS. It's completely free. You know what the what the web address is for that? I think it's just, let me check. Let me just type in uh, OBS. Uh, yeah, it's uh, obsproject.com. Uh, okay, I'm gonna- that's the, only, that's the only free one that I know of. I think the other ones are usually like paid. Okay, that's that's super helpful. Thank you. I, I kind of yeah. hope maybe somebody would speak up and let me know something that would work. Because uh, unfortunately, with the whole COVID thing, this class will continue to be online for a bit. And then I teach Business Twenty Two, which is very similar to this class, and we do the same assignment in that class. So I'll be using that uh, for them uh, in that class, so they can do at least a video of themselves. I think the video really does help in the presentation, just because you're able to see a face and and you get to see the facial expressions and it just helps a lot. Um, I have a lot of problems with the audio only. In fact, a lot of times they don't even work or I have to click the slide to get the audio to work and then it stops. And then I have to go to the next slide, then click the audio again to get it to start for the next slide. And it's, it's a little cumbersome. So if you can record it as a video, that's the key. 
uh, if you want to record it. Thanks, Jeremy. Any other questions on, on the assignment itself? Okay, you guys get it? All right, so as far as my presentation, I, I, wasn't, I didn't really want to give it, so I was just going to show you my slides. Uh, you know, that's my title slide, and then that's my navigation slide, and then that's my first slide. And then, you know, and it all builds. That's why you can't see it all. And oh, if you want me to show you how to do a build, I can do that real quick in case you don't know. Uh, and then I come all the way down to uh, the last slide, which is questions. And that's, I didn't do a recap slide. I just did questions at the end. But, but if you don't know how to do builds, I don't know if you guys can see my PowerPoint. So let me shrink it down a little bit just to make sure you can all see it. So can everybody see that in the middle? Okay, so here I'll just use this last slide of questions. So basically you just create, if you wanna use builds, I'll go to one that has more stuff on, I'll go back to this one here. So let's just say I, I wanna use builds. First thing I'm gonna do is create the whole slide just like it is. So in this case, I did a text box for that. I did a text box for that. And then I did a, a picture with a text box for each of these. And uh, you, know, you can create that. Hopefully you know how to in, insert a picture. So you can insert a picture from a file. So I went on the internet and I found pictures in, you know, whatever Google Docs or whatever. And then I was able to import those pictures in. And then I also created a text box. So I inserted a text box. Uh, which where is that? At? Hold on. Right here. So I inserted a text box. Just bring it to your screen and then you highlight it and then you create a text box. Anyway, I did all that. And then I created my whole slide. And then I just wanted to create a build out of it. So all you need to do is select what you want to build. So in this case, I started with this one as being number one. And if you come up here to animations, so select what it is that you want to build and then go to animations. And then in this case, um, it's because it shrunk down. I don't have all my options, but uh, there we go. So here's my animations right here. See them fly in up here, blinds, checkerboard. So whatever I wanted to do, if I wanted to fly in, then it'll fly in. If I want it to dissolve in, it'll dissolve. And if I want it to blind in, it'll blind in. Whatever one I, I pick, right? So once I select that and then I click whichever one I want it to do, now it's it's put into the order. And since I already have it all done here, what I'll do just for fun is I'll go to the animations pane and I will delete everything out of here. So that way uh, I can start all over, okay? By the way, the animation panes allows you to move things around. so. So I'm gonna start with my significant life events. I'm gonna just do up here because I like that the best. So the first thing is that, second one is I wanna do this in no particular order. And then over here, because I want this to come up together, I'm gonna to select the text box and then I'm gonna click shift and I'm gonna select the picture. And then I'm gonna click my dissolve or my up here. Same thing here for the second one. So I'm adding all these into my list. Select the text box, selects the picture, click up here. So now if I go to my animations pane, there, there, there they all are in order. So if I wanna play, uh, excuse me, if I wanna play the whole thing. How do I play the whole thing? I thought I could, well, here, I'll just go here and do it. So when I click, each one pops up in the order that I did it in, see? So if I wanna change the order for some reason, I can just move them around right here in this pane. I can slide them wherever I want them to go to get them in the right order. So even if I just wanted to do them all and like, oh, I don't like the order, I want this picture to come up instead of that one, you can shift it around to wherever you want it and then replay it again until you get the order that you want. So, so that's called the animation pane and this is called animations that, that you do that. That's how you do your builds. So, so if I go to this slide here, I mean, there's a lot of stuff on here that comes up on top of each other. So, oop, I went back, sorry. Sorry. So my next slide, I have, a, I have a bullet point, then a picture, then another picture, then my next bullet point, then my next bullet point, then another picture, then my next bullet point, then another picture, and then the last one onto the next screen. So anyway, and I can remove, move that order around however I want. So, all right. You guys cool with that? No questions on any of that? All right. So let me, uh, Close this one. And then uh, I'm gonna go to our PowerPoint here for a second. So, so real quick, what I wanted to just cover for two minutes here 
is this is a, a PowerPoint that killed. And uh, basically the idea here is, you know, we may not realize how critical a good PowerPoint presentation can be uh, when it comes to, you know, real life scenarios. And uh, you guys may remember, but um, this event happened in 1986, I think it was, and it was when the shuttle took off uh, from Cape Canaveral. And uh, I actually watched this live when it was taking place. And uh, if you know the story, what happened? It exploded in midair and uh, everybody died on board and, and uh, it was a pretty crazy thing. But what they did was they went in to research this entire problem that had happened. And of course it all rooted back to people kind of, you know, some say group think happened, but the reality was they knew that there was a problem they even held a meeting about the problem before the launch took place. And uh, again, it, it exploded uh, when it got up there. And this was the PowerPoint presentation that they gave to describe the problem. And I don't know about you, do you see any problems with that particular slide? It's not linear, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just a bunch of, bunch of information, right? There's nothing about it that catches attention. There's nothing about it that's compelling. And, uh, and it's, it's very difficult for people to, to read or to even get in a gist of what it's about. I mean, you and I look at it now. you might say, well, they must have known because they're all scientists. But the reality was that this, you know, this is the guy that gave this presentation was at a conference I went to on business communications. And he said, this is the, the PowerPoint that, you know, the death by PowerPoint in two ways. One, because this was what they brought forward to demonstrate that there was a problem and they should not be launching the space shuttle. And yet, it was death because these six astronauts or seven astronauts all lost their lives as a result. And he brings it back to poor presentation skills being given what cost the lives of these people. Because had this been done much more professionally and with good, you know, uh, uh, practical skills and giving a good PowerPoint presentation, it could have been the difference between life and death for these particular astronauts. At least that's the way he presented it. Uh, whether or not that would have been true or not, I think one thing we can all agree on is, I don't know about you, but I would not want to sit through a presentation where that was each PowerPoint slide being given because that's going to pretty much kill me to sit there and listen to that and to look at that. So obviously creating slides that are professional and easily readable and things like that allow your audience to have uh, not only um, you know, a great presentation and learn what you're trying to get them to learn or motivate them to get them to try and do what you want them to do, but they're not going to fall asleep on you. They're not going to be bored to death because uh, all it is is you speaking. There's nothing there to support what they're saying. So just a little thought to think about. Um, I did give you a world's worst PowerPoint presentation. It's in the assignment as, as well, the homework assignment for this week. And it's all these different things that people did in PowerPoint that are problematic and make sure you watch all of that. That's for the homework. So that's all I wanted to talk about. You guys, just so that you knew what that was about, um, you can go through the PowerPoint when you guys are reading your chapter and getting ready for your presentation and getting ready for your homework assignment that's gonna be coming up. So let me let me for a second, just take a minute to, uh, to just go over. <clears throat> I always like to do this when I did Zoom sessions last semester, just to go over our, um, our schedule here real quick. So just so you know what's what's up and what's coming. So uh, you, you know, is, are you guys okay with my little navigation grid that I put on the front page? Hopefully that makes things a little easier. Uh, so here's the module one you guys did that last week, sorry. I was saying the Zoom link on the homepage didn't work for me, but I went to um, the, okay. it was, I went to that thing on the side. Right here, yeah. Um, I just, I, I don't know what time you logged in, but I, tr I tried to log in five minutes early and it didn't work for me and I fixed the link. So it should work. Let me see. Let me see if it takes us there, ready? It takes us there now. So I fixed okay. it. You must've did it right before I fixed it because it okay. wasn't working. I was shocked. So I fixed it right before we started, but anyway. Uh, sorry, I got distracted here. Where am I at? Okay, I'll go back. All right. Yeah, if something doesn't work, they'll let me know. It's weird because I set it all up and then I come back later and something doesn't work. Anyway, so that's that was last week. You guys all did a great job, by the way. I was really impressed with everybody's work. I know that the homework wasn't difficult, but you guys all did a great job. 
this week is PowerPoint chapter 12, as well as reading chapter 12, check-in assignment. I hope I made it clear in my little intro video that the check-in assignments are really just to make sure you're getting into the book. So I'm not looking for essays. I'm looking for really the textbook answer to those questions as best you can. Uh, then this assignment right here, I wanna talk about do's and don'ts of business presentations. So <clears throat> I've talked about a little, a few things in tonight's uh, PowerPoint or tonight's Zoom meeting, but here's the world's worst PowerPoint presentations. Make sure you watch that. I just uploaded this eight tips to giving presentations like a pro. And then I just have a bunch of random videos on public speaking and, and PowerPoint slides and all that. So you don't have to watch all of them, just watch a few. And what I want you to do in the homework assignment, of course, is make a list of you know maybe seven to 10 do's and don'ts of, of, as to what you should do or not do in a PowerPoint presentation. And I'm looking for that. I want to see that you've thought about it and that you've hopefully picked some of the things I mentioned tonight in, uh, in your list. So then you have quiz number two, and then you have uh, individual presentations. Next week, we're going to talk about professionalism a little bit, and then we're going to get into business writing. So on week four, I am going to have another Zoom session because I really want to make sure that everybody understands that business writing is completely different than writing an essay in so many different ways. And I don't want you to write me essays. I want you to write me business documents. So what I've been doing is letting you get started and then putting a bunch of notes on all of your writing assignments. But then I'm finding that I'm wearing myself out, like putting all these comments. So I thought what I'd do is really just give a focus time on the do's and don'ts of business writing, as well as, you know, this is what you need to do in your assignments. And hopefully that'll be uh, enough to allow you to start off on, you know, the last step and really do a great job. So I'll be getting into that, but but the class is going to take a turn to focusing on business writing. And in addition to your homework and your quiz, you're going to also be having a, a weekly writing assignment. But but don't be afraid because they're only half page, maybe, maybe, maybe one page. It's a memo, it's an email, it's a letter, and that's you know pretty much it. So they're not long, they're meant to be brief and concise because that's what business writing is. It's not meant to be long, busy business people don't have time to read your essay. They want to get your paragraph, right? And be done with it. So we'll talk about all that when we get to that uh, in the weeks ahead. So, all right. So I'm pretty much done gabbing. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, this is the schedule that I have. So if you do feel like, hey, yeah, I want to just do mine in Zoom and be done with it. I'll schedule a time, then we'll meet in Zoom. You can share your screen. You can put your PowerPoint up and then you can do your presentation. I'll grade you right here and you're done. You don't have to upload anything. Um, but if you want to, if you want to do it that way, um, this is my schedule. I'll, I'll be available on Wednesday evenings, March 10th or March 24th. So I can have a few of you sign up at each of those uh, on Thursday evenings, March 18th and April 1st. So I kind of alternated days in case you can't do Wednesdays, maybe you could do Thursdays. And then I did Wednesday mornings and I also did Thursday mornings. It seemed like a lot less students could do mornings than evenings. So I kind of focused on that. So if any of you here want to pick a date and uh, you know you can type your date in the chat uh, here at the bottom of the screen, or you can just tell me and I'll put you in for one of those dates. Or if you want to think about it, you can think about it, but it's kind of nice having a date because then you know you have till then to get it done. If you record it, I may, I haven't put a deadline date in there yet, uh, technically, what I normally do for the session is I, again, schedule them every week. So every week we have a meet class, uh, people, people do a presentation in the class, and then it takes the whole semester to do that. So some people are doing them the second week, some people aren't doing them till the last week. But when I do it online, if you choose not to do it in Zoom, then I'll have a deadline date, probably the end of module one, or maybe in the middle of module two, where you have to have it done by and uploaded by. Uh, so you, your choice, either one, uh, but it won't be the end of the class. It'll be in the middle because I want you to be able to post it and then let students watch it and give their comments. So, all right. Any questions? I went over what I said. I thought it was going to be a half hour and I went 45. So my apologies. Um, I'm done. If you don't have any questions and you don't want to sign up for giving your presentation in Zoom, then I'm done. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but other than that, I'm done. 
Um, when would you suggest for us to sign up for? Like, around what date would you think is um, if you're going to present on Zoom? Well, I start March 10th, so I'm giving you what's that? Like 13 days or two weeks? So two right. weeks tonight, yeah. Two weeks, that should be plenty of time. Uh, and when I taught this class in the winter session, I gave them a week to get it done and uploaded. And we didn't do any Zoom sessions. So, uh, and they, you know, some few, few of them struggled, but a lot of them came to the table and they did it and did a great job. So uh, two weeks is plenty of time to get this ready. So, and then you have, you have basically, I'm looking at all of them being done by, oh, I didn't put any Thursday dates in here. So April, what did I say? Well, if anybody wants Thursday morning, let me know, but it's going to be like early April. So pretty much that'll be the deadline for them to be done. All right. All right. Well, hey, thank you, Professor. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for the class. Nobody, if anybody, if anybody, because here's the deal, if anybody has any questions, stick around, ask me questions. If you want to sign up for a date, let me know. If you don't want to sign up for a date and you want to do this as a video recorded, Fine, you guys can go. Have a great night, great week. And uh, we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks when we talk about business writing, which will be a very important one. So, Can we sign up for a date um, yeah. at another time or does it have to be now? No, you can sign up at another time. I'm gonna post this, so I'll let you guys tell me what you wanna do, but yeah. Okay. Actually, could I sign up for a date, please? Yeah. yeah. For March 10th? Yeah, here, I'll just put you in there. All right, perfect, thank you. You're welcome. I have a question just because I work retail. If I sign up for a date and I need to change it, is it okay if I do it like earlier or yeah. later? Okay. Very flexible, like even when we do it in the class, like a student will show up, I'm sorry, I didn't get it done. All right, we'll just do it next week, you know. I'm not too worried about it. I just don't want to push them all to the end, you know, that's my biggest issue. And here we don't have that issue. So yeah, you can move it to a different date. I was thinking the 31st for now for me. And then um, if I can maybe do it earlier just because I, I do my schedule a month out for work. So I just have to kind of play with that for a little bit. Okay, I'll, do, I'll put you down for that date, Tiffany. And by the way, this is normally a list that I have you guys actually sign up for. That's why it's moving all over the place, but I'll fix it so that your names are in there. Anyone else want to sign up? Yeah. Can I send up March 17th, 9 a.m.? Yes. Mia? What's your last name, Mia? Martinez. Okay, sorry. You, for some reason, you went off my screen. Is that right? Okay, thank you. Yes, that's right. All right, anybody else? Can I sign up for the April 1st? Yes, who's this? Sorry. Daniela. Okay, Daniela, April 1st, okay. Sorry. What's your last name, Daniela, again? Mendoza. Mendoza, okay. Let's put the last initial. All right, thanks, Daniela. Thank you. Anyone else want to pick a date? I'll send you a reminder, by the way, too. If you pick a date, I'll send an email out that week saying, hey, you, you we're going to be meeting on this night. Here's the people giving their presentations. I'll send you a list. So. All right. Uh, Ryan, you, are you good? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to do a date. I just wanted to ask. Um, so you went from like metal band to Jesus? Yeah, to, well, I actually was, it was a Christian metal band back in the day. It was kind of more like a glam band. We were like a, a Christian poison, <laughs> if that's <All> right. possible. <laughs> yeah. If that's possible, yeah. So it was fun. We played, we played like some LA, little local, little LA clubs and stuff. And it was a lot of fun. What but was the name of your band? What's that? What was the name of it? Do you know? Spectra. Our band's name was Spectra. Yeah. 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 We were pretty much nothing. I mean, you know, we did it for a couple of years. I think they, I mean, all my claim to fame is they had a thing called local licks on KMET or KLOS or whatever back in the day. 
and somebody said they heard us on there and they played us as a local band but we never went far you know we just played the local clubs even some of them were like paid to play you know we had to sell your own tickets to get people to come so yeah, I, I found you on some archive in 87. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, Professor. Have a good night. Yeah, you too, Ryan. Thanks, man. Thanks for asking. Priscilla, did you want to sign up for a date or no? Did I lose you? No, not yet. Um, I wanted to first figure out my schedule um, since I work full time and I go to school and I'm a full-time student still. So I'm trying to juggle everything around. So I'll let you know. I hear you, no worries. I just wanted to see, uh, did you have any other questions for me at all or? You... No, not at this time. Okay. How are you Thank you, have a good night. Guys, have a good one, Tiffany. Thank you, Priscilla. Daniela, are you good? Thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, have a good night. Okay, guys, have a good one. Thanks for being here. Oops. Oops, I backed over.